Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community, and neighborhoods. And now, from four properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the um, talk show, All Things Moore County. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning, Bill. We, um, we always mark our calendar by the beginning and the end of the school year. Yes, and it just started. It just started this week, which means that... Parents are happy and kids are not. Parents are very happy <laughs> and relieved. Yes. And the children are not, right? That's right. Um, and the teachers are probably trying to readjust from a couple of weeks off this summer, although they truly the teachers don't take that much time off like people think. No, they're working more than you think they are. So, you know, the um, September mm-hmm. um, almost marks the beginning of the fall and the uh, holiday season, which means we... We're on the downward slope to the holidays. And we have a lot of events that are coming up yep. in Moore County that we're going to be talking about. Yep. Um, t- today, we're going to be talking all about the um, Alzheimer's uh, walk that is coming up in two short weeks. Um, and... It's going to be held at the Sand Hills Community College. And the Alzheimer's Walk each year has grown by leaps and bounds. And as people's awareness of the disease grows, so does the interest, um, not just for the people who, who suffer mm-hmm. with Alzheimer's, but their caregivers. Yes. And um, there are so many people affected. Um, and... Alzheimer's is a, it's a brain disorder, and it's characterized by uh, changes in the brain that lead to deposits of certain proteins, Mm -hmm. and it causes the brain to shrink, Mm. Um, and um, one of the most common, Alzheimer's is one of the most common causes of of dementia, Um, and it's a very gradual decline in memory and thinking, behavior, and social skills. Right now, about six and a half million people in the U.S. um, age 65 and older live with Alzheimer's. And among them, more than 70% are 75 and older. Mm. Um, And of about the 55 million people worldwide with dementia, 60 to 70% are estimated to have Alzheimer's disease. My guess is it's not an easy diagnosis and it probably comes after the fact. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to be um, joined today. Um, if you happen to see the pilot um, last week um, on the 23rd of August, um, Dr. Carter Grine, um, 58 or 59 t- today. I'm 60. Now you're 60. Yes. And his wife, Kate Mills, are joining us. Um, Carter, you were... Um, You were diagnosed um, with um, Alzheimer's um, and younger than the average age. When did, when were you made aware of the condition? Um, It's, it was, um, I was scared because I like um, couldn't, couldn't remember where I put something and got into the car and, um, then forgot where where I was going to do or whatever, and then and then I started um, recognizing that something was really wrong, but it, it just snuck in there. It wasn't something that just like was a, a big pow or anything like that. But the the more it got, the more it was, and so after that we um, we took to a counselor. Is mm-hmm. yes, yeah, a neuropsychologist. Uh, right, and they gave charts, and they would give you like pictures of charts and if you um uh you had to get the right number going on and i had um on on that none of them i couldn't get any of the traits and and i'm a pretty you know uh uh, pretty bright guy pretty bright guy at least i think (laughs) i I think yeah the neurological evaluation is very challenging oh i came out sweating they did it three times to me and, yeah. and I just, I said, I can't do any more. How many years ago was this that this happened when you first... Be- so this was right at two years ago that he had his evaluation. Two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kate, I wanted to thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. uh, you and Carter have been married for 
10 years, something like that? About five. About yeah. five years. <laughs> okay. And um, this caught you off guard initially? Uh, did you know what was going on? What was your reaction? Well, I, um, again, because Carter was so young, it wasn't, um, you don't go straight to thinking like that this is a dementia. Um, you think it's stress, which Carter had a very stressful life and career. Um, you think it's, uh, we I, this started during COVID also, so we had oh. increased, um, right. you know, stress that was mm. very uncommon. Um, and at that same time, Carter was moving out of his practice and, um, uh, preparing for retirement so it was a big transition so um, it was really hard to know what uh, what was happening you know seeing different changes in his personality um, you know in terms of uh, his memory but uh, it was um, wasn't until two years ago that we really said something something significant is changing and um, that's when we sought out the evaluation is from what you've learned about Alzheimer's is it hereditary or is it something that strikes without any rhyme or reason and we don't know why? Both. Both. Uh -huh. okay. So it can be hereditary, and um, they have identified certain um, genetic components that they can see um, you know, and test for. Uh, in Carter's case, he has neither, none of that. Um, he has none of the identified factors. So um, that makes it a real challenge to... Um, it makes it a real challenge for uh, knowing where what the disease is and going through all the medical processes to, to identify dementia and Alzheimer's specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the walk to end Alzheimer's is being held on Saturday, September 14th, and it's going to start at the uh, Sand Hills Community College. Um, you will be participating in, oh, the, yes. in the walk? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, there's a check-in. Uh, for all walks, it opens at 9 a.m., and there's an opening ceremony at 10 a.m. Uh, with the walk starting immediately after. Um, so residents who join the walk are uh, people who either have some level of Alzheimer's or their caregivers who um, are, are there to um, support. Certainly. Right? Yes. And that from what I understand, there is a uh, on walk day. The participants honors they honor those who who have Alzheimer's, um, and the colors uh, that they use blue, purple, yellow, or and orange um, talk about someone. For instance, blue is someone living with Alzheimer's. Uh, purple is an individual who has lost someone to the disease. Yellow a person who is currently supporting or caring for someone living with Alzheimer's. And that takes up so many people. Mm -hmm. So if one person has it, there's a whole litany of people behind them. So it becomes, um, you know, that it takes a village type of, of support system. Yeah, we have um, the flowers that represent uh, someone living with Alzheimer's and someone who is supporting or caring s with someone um, with Alzheimer's. We have the, the flowers that represent those in front of our house um, uh -huh. to remind us of, um, of our work to, to help with Alzheimer's advocacy. Um, but yeah, it's, it, takes, it, does, it takes a village and... Um, uh, but what, what we found with a lot of our, we do a lot of public speaking um, to raise awareness, um, but often, you know, we'll take a poll of how many people in the room, and it could be a room of up to, a, you know, 400 people, and we'll ask, like, how many people in this room have been impacted by Alzheimer's, and, you know, typically almost everyone in the room will raise their hand, um, but then my second mm -hmm. question is, um, how many people in the room have Alzheimer's? And Carter's almost all, it's always been the only person that raises his hand. Um, and that's the difference between what Carter has to offer and what um, the rest of us experience, you know, because he's experiencing it directly and can really speak to that experience. Carter, did you retire as a dermatologist before the diagnosis? Uh, or was it as a result of the diagnosis? Uh, right at the same time, it was just amazing. Y you know, um, so, um, it was August, I can tell that, and, and I say, wow, this is going to pin out because now I'm not really, um, uh, you know, um, it, it's, um, 
I, I'm sometimes I blank up a little bit. Um, That's okay. So when sometimes um, uh, something happens like that, and and then I started looking at the other nurses and things, and uh, um, and, uh, and the speed that we go at, uh, and the and the you can't do that do it like that because we have to you know go with it. Uh, but I was I was um, I, I knew I, I had to um, to retire and and because of the other. Yeah, situation. and Carter had already <laughs> planned it. It just happened to be perfect timing. So you had planned it before the onset or before the diagnosis, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> the timing is, was crazy. What kind of um, uh, medicine do you take and um, what kind of reaction do you have to it um, to help I guess to slow the process, mm -hmm. right? Is that correct? So Kate, Kate is our uh, medicine person. Okay. So I'll, I'll <laughs> feed, feed you over there. Only, yeah. only with this particular diagnosis, but we. Um, so, there are a few medications that people are often pre prescribed. Uh, so Carter, uh, when they first are diagnosed with Alzheimer's, so Carter takes Dinepazil, which is one of the medications. It was um, developed in 1996. It was one of the first medications to be able to address kind of the cognitive issues. But um, as you said, there's a new medication that just came out at last, or just was FDA approved last summer, um, and that's uh, Lecembi or mm -hmm. Lecanemab, mm -hmm. and it's um, the first medication that's actually disease modifying so it actually does slow the progression of the disease instead of just treating the symptoms um, and since then we've had a new medication uh, denanomab come out just it was just approved this summer um, that is also for um, for altering the course of the disease so um, that was a big <laughs> emphasis for me when Carter was diagnosed to be able to access that medication but of course it was brand new it was really hard to get and it was extremely expensive Insurance covers it? Um, not at that time. Not at that time. What about now? It does now. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, are there any noticeable side effects um, from the med the new med medicine? Um, I, for, um, I really haven't had any issues at all Good. In, in that uh, way. And even the, the other end, though, um, I feel better right now, and, and that took about six months or, or whatever to start feeling well. I play a lot of tennis. Yeah. And, and so, um, so I, I'm, you know, the, I, I do think there's, um, I'm still going to continue this as long as possible uh, with this. Is playing tennis something that, since you played for a long time, mm -hmm. that's easy, but is, yes. is something that's current in like a day-to-day -day situation more difficult to grasp? Um, um, for you? Well, uh, when my friends uh, took me out to uh, golf, and and I, I said, I'm not sure I can do this, and I, I shot like about 115, and I said, I can't be on the golf course in 115 strokes, and I said, I'm, they're going to have to get rid of the golf, for, at least for me. Right. Uh, but tennis is something that you take to like a duck to water? Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So... Is it true, and I, I'm asking as a layman, um, does Alzheimer's affect current day uh, situations, not um, situations that maybe have happened 20 or 30 years ago? Is it short-term memory, not long-term? Well, it can affect um, different parts of the brain, and it also affects what people, like different people's brain. This is the, the challenge of Alzheimer's is that just like, um, that all brains are different, all people are different. So it affects uh, people differently because it's a disease of the brain. Um, but yes, generally it affects short-term memory, um, not long-term memory that's more hardwired in our brains. And so yeah, Carter's rote memory for tennis, which he's played since he was five years old, is still very strong. Right, <laughs> right. Um, but maybe remembering um, to go take out the trash might be might be something like that he was he might forget um you both have um embraced um em embraced this in such a way that you've become um spokespeople for alzheimer's mm -hmm. so that others can benefit from your experience mm -hmm. 
Yes, um, we recognize we've had a lot of advantages. Like you said, Carter happened to be retiring at the time he was, um, the significant symptoms were showing. Yeah. Um, other people don't have that opportunity and are, are left in really difficult situations financially. Um, also, we've had the time to be able to commit to finding, um, to getting access to medication for him. Um, most people don't have the luxury of spending hours and hours on the phone and at the computer trying to get those resources. Um, so we really, it was really important to us um, to advocate to the government, right, to go to, we went to D.C. and to Raleigh and talked to our legislators about access, improving access um, for everyone and creating a better system for that because, um, again, we feel like this is, there's, a, there's, there's hope in this new medication, there's, there's hope in knowledge, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but we want to make sure that everybody's able to access that. Yeah. Um, we're going to come back in the second set. We're going to continue the conversation um, with you both and um, talk a little bit more about the event that's coming up on Saturday, September the 14th. It's going to be held at uh, Sandhills Community College. Um, Check-in will start at 9 a.m. and the opening ceremony at 10, and then the walk will um, uh, occur right after that. This is All Things Moore County. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our second set of All Things Moore County. Um, we're talking about the um, walk to end Alzheimer's uh, walk uh, to be held uh, in two weeks on Saturday, September the 14th at Sandhills Community College. Um, Check-in is at 9 a.m. Opening ceremonies are at 10. And um, the walk, this is an annual walk, and it's a great opportunity not just for people who, who have the disease, but for their caregivers and to help create awareness um, about the disease. Um, uh, Carter, I understand that last year at the walk, uh, you actually got up and you spoke to um, the people. Yes. Um, and you will be again this year. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, when, um, speak more. Yeah. Um, when, when I see the people that, that I'm with, um, it's they've already been shut out that's okay <laughs> yep <laughs> um and and the, the 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 other people are just the the, the dementia people of all degrees um uh it's it's tough because the family has learned to be their you know um what what they're supposed to be doing in their life too but it's not and and they, they didn't leave people like um, sitting for four, six hours or things like that, which nobody can do that. And and, um, and it, it 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 was it was um, it was a powerful speech because um, <laughs> it makes you it it makes you emotional. Yeah, very emotional. Because tell me uh, why. Be because I care so much for people. Right. Um, have you? had the opportunity to meet a lot of people who have the same disease you do well um we we do um have, you what do you i'm gonna let kate say that How okay we we do we do we work um we have lunches actually that uh have started with other couples in in which one of the um couples have been uh, diagnosed with dementia right and um, because we understand how how scary it is it's um, you know it's unique to our experience where it's it's a couple environment sometimes it's a it would be a child caring for their parent uh, mm -hmm. um, but for a couple it's a very unique uh, change in in dynamics right when you have a, a disease mm -hmm. like dementia diagnosed and so we we try to um, we we do lunches with them to to help people uh, answer questions and also just to normalize this uh, this this new thing in their life that's really scary. Right. Do you find that um, you have to combat some preconceived notions about Alzheimer's, what it is and what it isn't? Do people um, not fully understand um, what what it means? To, to have the disease and, and what the day-to-day -day, uh, managing of it 
uh, becomes? Um, it, uh, I'm, I'm biking me on. It's okay. You, it's, it's okay. So it's, uh, yeah, people have a lot of preconceived notions, and typically people oh, imagine gosh. someone who is very elderly, sitting in a corner, not able to communicate, right. completely dependent. Um, that's the latest stage of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's starts way before that. And that's what we're able to speak to because Carter's very articulate. He's able to talk about his experience and his feelings now right. having this experience. Um, and how, how, because I think most of our knee jerk reaction is to um, protect, you know, put someone in a safe environment away from danger. <laughs> um, but, but you're, you know, for Carter and I, we still have to live. We're we're still um, we're still a part of the world, and we we want to continue that way and um, do what we can do to help others that have this uh, have a similar situation. Um, uh, with, with this, uh, um, we were having uh, a lunch, and um, this was in a, a, um, um, with uh, t uh, a cousin. And um, when they started talking, they just left me out, and and it was, I was just this, like they're they're kind of moving over, scooch, scooching over. You mean and, ignored and, that it, you were even in the exactly. room? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and maybe I wasn't uh, at my best at that time. I didn't I didn't rem remember anything on my side, um, which which is each just shows how how Kate is Kate is very smart. And uh, she she just all of a sudden then just said oh and just recognized, right. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard because people. So he's referring to when uh, we just me him and his cousin were having lunch, and um, the when you're talking with someone with Alzheimer's, you need to give a little bit of space in order for a person to reflect mm -hmm. and then right. communicate. Right. Um, and what his cousin and I did was instead of leaving space for him to participate in the conversation, we just started talking faster <laughs> right. to, yeah. to close the Which is silence. Even worse. Yeah. Right. To, to, to fill the silence because we're not used to silence and conversations. Um, and so eventually, yeah, Carter was just like, I'm not, e I'm not even included here? Why am I sitting here if no one's going to include me in this um, conversation? So that was a real uh, important wake up moment for me. Um, but the best part is that he was able to say to me, yeah. you know, like, I want to be part of this conversation. I need you to make space for me in this conversation. So is it is social isolation uh, yes. a big part of it? Yes, uh, they, they do. And, uh, and a lot of people uh, have problems uh, communicating Right. And uh, their families, it, it's they God bless their, all, all of them. They're, they're doing their, the best that they can, but it takes a lot of work. Right. And, and Kate can tell you that. Uh, and, and so um, I, I think that um, I, when I when I see somebody like like at our uh, buffet table uh, and we start talking and we start talking about how what everybody wants to do. And it's really interesting to, to do that and, and have have those people show, you know, what what they are doing. And um, it's 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 there. Are, there are thousands, millions, like you said, uh, and and um, it, it's, it's not going to be cured yet. Um, I'm uh, one of the people that are um, hopeful because I my treatments um, are really coming out well. Uh huh. With that, okay. So, um, in between the lines, what I also hear you saying is, if you have Alzheimer's, you still have feelings. Yes. And it can hurt your feelings. Mm. Uh, you might um, maybe internally process it mm. and not express it verbally, mm. but just because you have it and you may not be as active a participant in the conversation, mm. it can uh, affect how you feel inside yes it, it is that way and it's um i i i know it's going to take a, a long time for this and it's it's um it's it's going to be years before everything starts coming coming out even more they have three medicines right now okay and um and we'll just have to see what happens and 
Okay. Is it fair to say that the medicines that are available today are medicines that slow the process? Because there's not a cure at this <clears throat> point. For, is that correct? Correct. Yes. <clears throat> there's not a cure, but there are disease-modifying medications that slow the progression. And, and the brain. Yeah. yeah. So what they're doing is removing what they understand now is that the plaque in the brain that builds up is is causing damage is damaging the brain. The plaque in the brain. Okay. And so the medication that Carter is on removes that plaque from the brain. So the idea is that it won't do further damage. When I hear the word plaque, I think of arteries. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. that? It's kind of like that because you imagine like plaque around your neurons. Yep. Preventing the communication that it's supposed to do, and actually they will die. The um, so it's it's slowly killing the brain. It's it has a similar function. So the brain is not. Uh, fight uh acting on all eight cylinders mm -hmm. is that correct mm -hmm. and then the number of cylinders that it's firing on um, get reduced over time so you, you try to slow it up yeah and it's and like we were talking about earlier it's different in every person so it may affect one part of the brain in one person and one part of the brain in another person which affects different functions right it may for example carter has early onset and um primary progressive aphasia and that impacts language and communication. Um, so that's that's specific to him. Right. Whereas in another person, it might affect behavior um, or motor skills. So it's it's unique to each person. Okay. Um, the event, the Walk to End Alzheimer's, is also a fundraising event for research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, last year, <laughs> do you recall how many people attended the um event because you probably each year it's getting bigger and bigger i, I can't recall the uh, okay uh, but it was very um wonderful that we ran across the bridge yep. with everybody <laughs> and came back and uh i don't know how many there are but it had to be at least hundreds right yeah well the um the event is saturday the 14th of september just in two short weeks at sand hills community college and uh, there will be a check-in at 9 a.m and the event will last what from 10 to about two it'll so, it's a little shorter than that so it's, we have the, the 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 spoken you know the kind of ceremony part is about mm -hmm. an hour and then we do the walk and it's only a mile so anybody can participate we had people in wheelchairs participating um, last year, so um, it was. It's just a really nice uh, thing for us all to do together, to walk together, to show our solidarity and support of each other. Okay. Last year, um, if I'm reading this correctly, you raised more than one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. The the walk did completely. Yes. That's that's crazy. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It grew significantly, and and it's grown again, and that's why we've moved um, from the location last year to Sand Hills because it was getting too big. Too big. Um, which is a great problem to have. Too much support. Well, this year, people can who come will get a chance, Carter, to meet you and and to ha to hear you speak again. All right. That's right. Yes. We're going to be back in the third set. Um, we're speaking with Carter Grine and his wife, uh, Kate Mills. Um, all about um, the walk to end Alzheimer's in Moore County, which will happen in, in two weeks on September 14th. We'll be right back. Um, we're back in our third and final set with um, Dr. Carter Grine and um, his wife, Kate Mills, um, who will be um, at the event on September 14th, the walk to end Alzheimer's uh, in Moore County. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, we had the walk manager, Victoria Huggins, on the show. And she was just filled with enthusiasm that it was like she was plugged in. And um, uh, she, has, she provides a lot of energy uh, for the event, and she'll be there. Yes, she as definitely well. will. She definitely will. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, I want to ask you a couple of things about the event, um, but I want to go back to the very beginning, if we could. Um, is there a, a point before an Alzheimer's um, diagnosis is made? There, is there a period of denial? Is there um, a lapse where you just accept and take for granted maybe some forgetful moments um, or people's names 
and you don't do anything about it. Um, and what would you tell people who, how do they recognize when it's time to um, take your spouse or your, or your child taking their parent um, to a doctor? And what do they do to test? Uh, is it just a cognitive test they give you? The, that test that we talked about yes. um, showed me that I couldn't do t nine figures. And I'm, I'm a physician for a long time, and, you, and I've said, uh-oh, this is, this is it. You know, and I, and I, I didn't know what it was going to be, the, the, but I knew it was not going to be very good on, on that uh, situation. And um, then they're going to start getting into scans, uh, and they'll try to look at, okay. check out the brain and see what's, what's happening there. Yeah, but to your point about the um, when do you know <clears throat> to yeah. seek out evaluation, Yeah, um, there are a lot of resources on the Alzheimer's Association website and um, about what is normal aging versus what is dementia-related and um, memory and memory issues. So I think that's a good resource for looking at the difference. Also, I feel like you can you can just feel a difference. Um, it's kind of like for those uh, parents who have concerns about their children, right? And they, um, at some level, they just know something in their, in their gut, something is wrong here. Um, and that's a similar feeling with this, that you know that there's a normal level of memory um, loss and there's a normal level of forgetfulness and then there's something different. And that's how, um, that's how I kind of experienced this, that it just felt like something was different. They say that um, the Alzheimer's disease can cause a decline in the ability to make sensible decisions. Um, for instance, uh, making poor choices in social settings or wearing clothes for the wrong type of weather. Mm -hmm. Does that... You know, but that's also a really difficult one because some people are sensitive to cold, for example, and uh -huh. especially if you're talking about an, an older person <laughs> that might also be more sensitive to the cold. So again, it's a lot of knowing the person that you are considering um, what their uh, what their condition could be. And if you know them well, then you know, you know, already people have certain deficits already. Yeah, all of us do, <laughs> right? We have certain sensitivities, but we have to see, okay, what what is kind of baseline and then what is um, what is something that is 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 different that is is really changing in that person's personality. The uh, Mayo Clinic um, has a very extensive site on Alzheimer's. They cite the following uh, um, issues um, that can come up at the beginning. Um, depression, loss of interest in activities, uh, social withdrawal, um, mood swings, um, distrust in others, um, anger or aggression, uh, changes in sleeping habits, uh, wandering, uh, loss of inhibitions, delusions such as behaving as if uh, something had been stolen. Um, do any of those ring true to you in your experience? I don't think so, but... Okay. Well, I um, think that when, when this first happened, right, because you do become self-conscious of um, forgetting things, and so uh, we did withdraw a little bit socially. Um, well, what we... My family was the one that was taken for for the most and um and we had to recognize because I wasn't the same person that I am right now right and they didn't know that right and and because of that they were trying to like do too much and and have one of the family members and in, uh, in the house every day and and that's how it it started going where I had to kind of like um it, it's it, it just feels like like a child or, or or something like that, and and they just didn't understand it. Well, so. it's it's scary, right? And it's something um, all those symptoms that you s described are scary. Yeah. Um, terrifying, yeah. in yeah. fact. <laughs> and um, but uh, typically with dementia, it's not a sweeping disease that all of this comes in and one day you're just unable right. to do or having all of these symptoms. It's a very slow, progressive disease. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a constant weighing of abilities 
and safety, right? Like trying to balance those things and, and making sure that we are um, continuing to treat our loved ones with dignity, um, the dignity mm-hmm. that they, they deserve. That's the difference right. of working with adults as they are, you know, with, with adults mm-hmm. as they are um, progressing in this disease, they are still humans, they are still, um, have their own self-worth and dignity, and we have to f- make sure that we're, um, we're, we're understanding that and recognizing that. Um, and I think that, so that one of the ways that we talk about this is really looking at abilities versus disabilities. Um, right. I'm a part of a lot of conversations about Alzheimer's and the chart, the rating scale that they use is similar to the rating scales of, of cancer progression. And that's on, and it's, um, but it's based on what is a person no longer able to do. So you might be um, unable to tie your shoelaces and button your shirt, and that puts you at a level three. Um, And so it's looking at what are you no longer able to do over time. Um, What we like to focus on is what you are able to to do over time. Right, um, right. It's a, it's a glass half full or half empty, mm-hmm. and you want to focus on the glass being half full. And not in an unreasonable way. You still have to look out for safety, just like we do in all parts of our lives, but it's also a focusing on making sure people are able to do things independently as long as possible. Yeah. Tell me about the, um, the movie that you mentioned at the break um, called Still Alice, uh, which stars uh, Julianne Moore. Um, I didn't see the movie, but um, tell me a little bit about it. So I had been recommended the the book um, when it uh, when when we first found out about Carter's diagnosis, and um, it's and it, it was turned into a movie later. But it focuses on um, from the perspective of the person with Alzheimer's and their diagnosis, working in a professional job, and um, her journey of recognizing her symptoms, how she's impact how it's impacting her family. And, um, and she's, uh, she really makes a point of saying like, I'm, I'm still Alice, I'm still me and I still have a lot to offer the world and I need people to see that. Right. Um, and, uh, and that really helped inform my mindset about, about how to, how to, how to go forward with this disease. Uh, it's very easy to focus on the doom and gloom. Um, right. it's, it's terrifying and, uh, and a lot of, um, in early interactions with doctors, Right. They Mm -hmm. were saying it was kind of like, okay, organize your affairs um, (laughs) and get ready for the worst. Um, Mm -hmm. And I guess partly because. Thank goodness for new technology. Mm -hmm. We have new technology, new um, new medications that are changing Mm -hmm. the narrative and also just a new way of looking at life. You know, now that we Mm -hmm. can we can think about, like, what are your strengths and and how can we focus on those and make the world accommodate um, Carter's uh, Carter's challenges in a way that he can continue to function in the world. And um, as we wrap up and close in closing, Carter, I want to ask you a question. And just listening to Kate, it just came to my, my mind. What empowers you about the way uh, people respond to you and react to you and communicate with you? What empowers you the most? Yeah, um, I, I go with, with, with love. Uh, I think that's the most important thing, and um, I like to um, um, tell people, um, uh, let them talk, and, and if they want to, uh, um, and um, try to make that person feel like there's somebody really important because they yeah. are. Mm-hmm. And and so you're meant to feel important as well in conversation, and not to be excluded. In, in a in a three way conversation that becomes a two way conversation. Yeah. Or well, we the the best one that we had was uh, uh, twenty people uh, uh, went to a restaurant with with these people. Uh-huh. And everybody stood up and said the the things. What's the most important th- thing in your life? Right. And and that's what kind of got me on it. And uh, and but st- I still think about uh, what those people say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, if people want to get additional information about the walk uh, on September the 14th at the Sand Hills Community College, where can they go, Kate? So if you just Google the Moore County Walk to End Alzheimer's, that'll uh-huh. send you straight to the, to the um, website okay. where you can register 
to walk and participate. Okay. Um, ALZ.org is the General Alzheimer's website, and you can also get there um, through that. ALZ.org. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm so glad that you both came in and participated. Carter, it was great to see you. Thank you. And um, we had a chance before the taping to um, share a little bit about some people we, we know in common. And um, Kate, it was a pleasure to meet you. And um, I hope the event is a huge success. I hope the weather breaks a little bit and it's a beautiful <laughs> fall day. This is a little hot today. Um, but thank you both for coming. Um, the Walk to End Alzheimer's is in two weeks at the Sand Hills Community College. Uh, Check-in is at 9 a.m. and the opening ceremony is at 10. And um, this is a great opportunity to meet other people who are facing some of the same challenges to create a better understanding um, of the things that sometimes the caregivers have to go through as well and an opportunity to raise some money for research. Um, this is All Things Moore County. Um, have a great week. Thank you.